Hey, what's up? This is Caleb Ward, and in this quick After Effects tutorial, I'll show you how to rig your very own lens flare in After Effects using 100% native plugins. So this technique doesn't use any third-party plugins. We're not talking optical flares. We're not talking Light Factory. This is just a series of solids with an add transfer mode applied to them, stylized, and then rigged together to create this awesome realistic lens flare look. So you'll notice that all of the elements, whenever it, the lens flare gets to the center of the scene, they kind of all push together, and when the lens flare is further away, they kind of stretch. I'll show you how to do that using a quick expression, and let's get started. So first things first, I'm gonna make a new composition, and I'm gonna call this, uh, I don't know, maybe tutorial comp, and it's five seconds long, that's perfectly okay. Click okay. And the first thing we're gonna do is create a new null object, so you can hit command option shift Y, and we'll name it flare position, flare position. So what we're gonna do is link our lens flare to the position of the null object. That way we have something to grab onto and move it around in space. So to create the lens flare, I'm gonna first create maybe a blue solid, something like that. And I'll use the ellipse tool to create maybe a little orb and I'll feather it out. I'll use the title action save to help us find the center here. And we'll just center it up as best we can right about there. It's looking pretty good and I'm gonna duplicate, actually first before I duplicate, I'm gonna call it center and I'll duplicate the center again and I'll scale down this inner one to about there and I think I want the center to be maybe a greenish color, maybe right about here and a little more saturation. Click OK. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the second center object here, the green one, and I'm gonna make it into this long little arm thing. We're gonna call this long arm. And instead of green, I'm gonna hit Command Shift Y to open up my solid settings. I'm gonna make this blue again, something like right about there click enter, and then I'll duplicate that one and rotate it a little bit, maybe something right about there, scale it down, and I go in and stretch it out to where it matches this arm in thickness, but not in length there. So something like that. And the reason why it doesn't look quite right is because the transfer mode is not set to add, so I'll go ahead and change that to add. And maybe we should duplicate the center one more time Maybe like scale it down a little bit and maybe the, the largest center, we can feather it out a little bit more, maybe something like that. Yeah, that's looking pretty good, I like that. And so what we're gonna do is go ahead and select all these layers and use the pick whip, this little squiggly line thing here and drag it to the flare position. So now wherever the flare position is, the lens flare moves with it, pretty cool. And I think for stylistic, purposes, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the center one more time and maybe make this object here. I'm just going to offset it and turn down the opacity a little bit, maybe something right about there. And I'm going to hit Command Shift Y one more time and choose maybe a purplish color. Maybe not quite, maybe a little bit deeper purple, something like that. So it pops. Yeah, I'm liking that. So I can move my flare position up here and everything moves with it. All right, so next thing I want to do is create the negative objects. So if I go back to the example flare, I want to create these elements right here, the ones that are going to be doing the exact opposite of whatever my lens flare is doing. In order to do that, I'm going to create a new solid, and let's make these ones just like the example composition. We'll make these kind of a desaturated green color here, and I think I'll just use the ellipse tool one more time, create something, maybe make this one a little fatter, something like that and feather it out to where it's about there and turn down the opacity and change the transfer mode to add. So in order to do this uh, negative position technique, I'm gonna have to open up the position by clicking P and then I'm gonna select the flare position, hit P again, and I'm gonna right click and separate the dimensions of both of these. And so let me rename this guy to negative object and I'm gonna drag a slider 
control over to the negative object. That way we can adjust the distance. And I'll explain that here in a little bit. But for right now, we'll just call this slider control multiplier. And I'm going to change that number to 2. So this is where our expression comes in. We're going to have to write a short expression. It's not long, but um, it's going to be in the comments below. So don't worry about memorizing it. You can simply just copy and paste it into your next project. So the expression is this, and all I did is option click on the stopwatch to open up my expression editor. It's MLT is equal to, and I'm going to pair it to the slider that's attached to the negative object. So the multiplier MLT is equal to whatever the slider value is. I'm going to click enter and create a new variable. DIST for distance is equal to open parentheses MLT plus, oops, I'm sorry, plus one closed parentheses times open parentheses width divided by two, close parentheses, semicolon, enter again. FP for flare position is equal to, and we're going to pair it to the X position because we're dealing with the X position of the negative object, X position of the flare position, a uh, lot of position there, sorry, uh, times negative one, semicolon, enter one more time, EQ, is equal to open parentheses DIST plus FP close parentheses divided by MLT for our multiplier and then lastly we'll just call the EQ function or yeah EQ function which uses all of these little variables here so I'll click away and so now we can see that the X position of this object will be linked to the X position of the lens layer, just negative. See that? Pretty cool. So now we got to do the same thing to the Y. And for the Y, it's a little bit easier. All we have to do is copy this expression and option click on the Y and command V for paste. And we just got to go in and change the things related to the X position to Y position. So instead of width, we're talking about height. Ooh, wow. I am horrible at spelling, height, and instead of the X position, we're talking about the Y position and click away, Oop. click away. And now, whenever we move the flare position around, you can see that the negative object does the exact opposite, exactly what we want it to do. So the hard part is done. So I can now duplicate the negative object and I can move this slider, we can do maybe five, and I'll move it closer to the center here and I'll let me move the flare position out of the way so you can see a little bit better here. So let me make the original one not quite so, so bright. And I'll take this guy right here and I'll scale him down and then I'll duplicate him again and we can change the multiplier to maybe two and then I can duplicate it one more time and change that multiplier to maybe it's one. And maybe for that one, I want him to scale up, be pretty large like command shift y maybe we want this one to be maybe a desaturated purple it doesn't really matter we can stylize it any way we want so now all of these objects will do the exact opposite of what we want them to do uh, i'm sorry exact opposite of where the lens flare position is pretty cool so now the only thing that we want to do is add in the elements that will go between the lens flare and the center of our scene so in order to do that i'm going to create a new solid command y and yeah, we'll make them purple, that's fine. And I'll use my ellipse tool again, right there, and I'll feather this guy out, and I think I'm gonna scale him down, change the transfer mode to add, and now I'll turn the opacity down to maybe, I don't know, 21. It's kind of arbitrary, but sure, 21, that's fine. And so I'll call this positive object. And I'll hit P to open up the position and right click separate dimensions. So now, uh, just as before, we have the X position and the Y position separated. So we can link to the X position and Y position in the flare position layer. So many positions. Uh, option click. And 
I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, before I get going, let me add the slider control to the positive object. There we go. So option click and I'm going to do multiplier is equal to parent to the slider here. And I'm going to do semicolon enter. So this is kind of a long expression, but basically it's open parentheses width divided by two close parentheses, and I'm going to do plus open parentheses, pick whip to the X position of the flare position, and I'm going to do divided by the multiplier MLT close parentheses minus open parentheses width divided by open parentheses MLT for multiplier times two, close parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. Okay, again, you can copy and paste these in the comments below. You don't have to type them out by hand every time. So I'll click away and oh, it says I have an error here, divide by zero. And that's because our slider control here is set to zero and it's basically telling me your value is zero, dummy. So I'll just hit two right there, I'll click back in, click out, and there you go. It automatically adjusts there. So now, like before, the positive object is linked to the lens flare X position. So now I, all I want to do is make it linked to the Y position. So I'm just going to copy this effect and I'm going to option click in the Y here and paste. And instead of width, again, I want height. And instead of the X position, I want it to be the Y position and we'll do height. All right, so I'll click away, and now you can see that the object has now moved between the center and the lens flare position, and I can move this around here, and you can see it just stretches very similar to the way the negative objects work. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this positive object again, and I can go into the slider, maybe do four, and we can make this guy, maybe color him to be I don't know, maybe like a green turquoise, it doesn't really matter. And we'll duplicate him one more time and we'll make this one like maybe really close to the center, maybe like 17. And we'll scale him down real small. There we go. All right, cool. So whenever we move our flare position around now, we have objects that are positive, we have objects that are negative, and then we have the main flare body there. And because we're using the, the add transfer mode, they all kind of blend into each other whenever they hit together there. Pretty cool. So the only other thing that I want to do is I want to put an expression on the arms so that they rotate in relation to the flare position. Ooh, I'm sorry, in relation to the flare position along the X axis. So in order to do that, I'm just going to select the arm here and I'll go ahead and move these down here. So they're a little bit easier to pick with and I'm going to open up the rotation. And so I'm going to option click on the rotation and we'll do pick whip to the X position divided by, I don't know, 30. And so basically it's gonna take whatever the value of the X position currently is, it's gonna divide that value by 30 and make that our rotation. So you can see it already has kind of started rotating it. And so when we move this in space, you can see the long arm is moving around. Pretty cool. And you know, maybe I don't want it to go completely sideways like that. I can go in and maybe do um, minus 20 to kind of even it out to where it's not quite as drastic there. Yeah, okay, that's looking a little bit better. And uh, we can copy this expression and apply it to our second arm here. Oh, Command V. And maybe we want this one to be divided by, I don't know, 50, so it won't move quite as much, minus maybe 30. And then why don't we go ahead and put this entire expression in parentheses, and we can say maybe times negative one. So basically, instead of rotating clockwise, we want the small guy here to rotate counterclockwise. So I'll click away. And now, whenever we move it in space, you can see they kind of collapse towards each other and even overlap at a point. 
But the cool thing is they are linked to the X position of the flare. So yeah, this has been a quick tutorial. My name is Caleb Ward. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them and I'll see you next time.